In response to popular demand, the Android Framework team has written an opinionated guide to architecting Android apps, and they've developed a companion set of architecture components. Hi, my name's Lila, a developer advocate for Android, and I'm here to introduce you to these shiny new architecture components. These components persist data, manage lifecycle, make your app modular, help you avoid memory leaks, and prevent you from having to write boring boilerplate code. Your basic Android app needs a database connected to a robust UI. The new components, Room, View Model, Live Data, and Lifecycle make that easy. They're also designed to fit together like building blocks. So let's see how. I'll tackle the database using Room, which is a new SQLite object mapping library. To set up the tables using Room, we can define a plain old Java object or POJO. We then mark this POJO with the at entity annotation and create an ID marked with the at primary key annotation. Now for each POJO, you need to define a DAO or database access object. The annotated methods represent the SQL-like commands you need to interact with your POJO's data. Now take a look at this insert method and this query method. Room has automatically converted your POJO objects into the corresponding database tables and back again. Room also verifies your SQLite at compile time. So if you spell something a little bit wrong, or if you reference a column that's not actually in the database, it will throw a helpful error. Now that you have a Room database, you can use another new architecture component called Live Data to monitor changes in the database. Live Data is an observable data holder. That means it holds data and notifies you when the data changes so that you can update the UI. Live Data is an abstract class that you can extend. Or for simple cases, you can use the mutable live data class. If you update the value of the mutable live data with a call to set value, it can then trigger an update in your UI. What's even more powerful though, is that Room is built to support live data. To use them together, you just modify your DAO to return objects that are wrapped with the live data class. Room will create a live data object observing the database. Then you can write code like this to update your UI. The end result is that if your Room database updates, it changes the data in your live data object, which automatically triggers UI updates. This brings me to another awesome feature of live data. Live data is a lifecycle aware component. Now you might be thinking, what exactly is a lifecycle aware component? Well, I'm glad you asked. Through the magic of lifecycle observation, live data knows when your activity is on screen, off screen, or destroyed so that it doesn't send database updates to a non-active UI. There are two interfaces for this, lifecycle owner and lifecycle observer. Lifecycle owners are objects with lifecycles, like activities and fragments. Lifecycle observers, on the other hand, observe lifecycle owners and are notified of lifecycle changes. Here's a quick peek at the simplified code for live data, which is also a lifecycle observer. The methods annotated with at on lifecycle event take care of initialization and teardown when the associated lifecycle owner starts and stops. This allows live data objects to take care of their own setup and teardown. So the UI components observe the live data and the live data components observe the lifecycle owners. As a side note to all you Android library designers out there, you can use this exact same lifecycle observation code to call setup and teardown functions automatically for your own libraries. Now you still have one more problem to solve. As your app is used, it will go through various configuration changes that destroy and rebuild the activity. We don't want to tie the initialization of live data to the activity lifecycle because that causes a lot of needlessly re-executed code. An example of this is your database query, which is executed every time you rotate the phone. So what do you do? Well, you put your live data and any other data associated with the UI in a view model instead. View models are objects that provide data for UI components and survive configuration changes. To create a view model object, you extend the view model class. You then put all of the necessary data for your activity UI into the view model. Since you've cached data for the UI inside of the view model, your app won't require the database if your activity is recreated due to a configuration change. Then when you're creating your activity or fragment, you can get a reference to the view model and use it. And that's it. The first time you get a view model, it's generated for your activity. When you request a view model again, your activity receives the original view model with the UI data cached. So there's no more useless database calls. To summarize all of this new architecture shininess, we've talked about Room, which is an object mapping library for SQLite, Live Data, which notifies you when its data changes so that you can update the UI, and importantly, it works well with Room so that you can easily update the UI when the database values change. 
We've also talked about lifecycle observers and owners, which allow non-UI objects to observe lifecycle events. And finally, we've talked about view models, which provide you data objects that survive configuration changes. Altogether, they make up a set of architecture components for writing modular, testable, and robust Android apps. You can sensibly use them together, or you can pick and choose what you need. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. In fact, a more fully fledged Android app might look like this. For an in-depth look at how everything works together and the reasoning behind these components, check out the links in the description below. To jump straight into code and get started working with these objects, you can check out the code labs and samples for lifecycle and persistence. Happy building, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.